All right, guys, welcome back to Death From Above 40K. It is battle report time again, and we've got uh, some blood angels taking on some farsight enclaves. So, Jake's here to run the farsight enclaves, and I am, of course, running the blood angels because no one touches my bloody blood angels. That's, that's, that's my army. Back it up. Well, they're all... Yeah, anyway, moving forward. <laughs> so, uh, what we'll do is we'll go through each army list, and then uh, we'll break down what's in it. So, we'll start with the blood angels. There's been a few changes made to the list, nothing major. First things first, zooming in over here. I'd like to apologize, I didn't quite get these guys finished painted. If you're watching my channel, you know I don't like this sort of thing. I like fully painted armies, but I just ran short of time. So there's an Assault Intercessor squad in here, making its debut today. Not quite finished, but still above tabletop standard, so happy to film it. All right, let's go through the army. It is a battalion, uh, so 12 command points. So, HQs, we've got the Warlord, which is uh, Chief Apothecary. Um, he's got the Teeth of Terror, he's the Warlord, and he's got Selfless Healer. So, pretty much, he's just going to jump around, reviving people and doing all that jazz. Then we've got our Primaris Captain. Now, he's got Mastercraft, the Power Sword, and he's got... His gun has been upgraded to the Decimator Relic, so that's going to cost me a command point. So, I've taken two relics. So, Teeth of Terror... Decimator. All right, troops. Starting over here, making their debut, we got an assault intercessor squad. So four of them are just chainsaws and heavy bolt pistols, or well, Astartes chainsaws, we've got to say now. And then we've got the uh, leader here, who's got a uh, thunder hammer, and he's got the uh, heavy bolt pistol as well. Then as usual, we've got one, two five-man intercessor squads with auto bolt rifles and power fists on the sergeants. Um, we'll see how these guys go today, and. I honestly don't think they're going to be better than these guys, but hey, we'll see what happens. All right, uh, another change. We've dropped the Librarian Dreadnought and replaced him with this five-man unit of Hellblasters with Assault um, Plasma Guns. Then we've got, at the back, one, two Furioso Dreadnoughts. Both them Furio have the Blood Talons and Heavy Flamers on each in the center. We've got the Redemptor Dreadnought. He's got the big plasma cannon, onslaught Gatling cannon underneath him, um, power fist arm, and he's got the Icarus rocket pod on top, and he's got the two uh, storm bolters, pretty stock standard. Then we've got three attack bikes, multi-melters, bolt guns, you know them, you love them. Then we've got a five-man death company squad, chainsaws and hand flamers. They went really well last game, so I like this loadout, so I'm keeping it. So, that comes in at 1,500 points. One command point spent um, on an extra relic. We'll see how this goes. We've got a few changes in the list, but I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident with it. All right, over here, far side enclave. So, what has Jake put in here? We sat down and we're going over this a bit just to try and make it as far side enclave as we can. Sorry for anyone who realizes that these are green guys. I'm slowly getting through painting them up into their new color because I really like the far side enclave, so probably most of this will be getting repainted red at some point. But time is of the essence, and I don't have unlimited amounts of it. So, let's go through the list. We've got far side himself, because you just wouldn't leave home without him. He will be the warlord. Um, he's got his shield, his plasma gun, and his sword, and his... Uh, as you can see, bounding off this, ready to stab some blood angels in the head. Next to him, we've got an XV-8 commander. He's got uh, two fusion blasters. He's got, uh, oh, what is that called, a burst cannon on the back. He's also got a shield. Now, he's taking the relic of fusion blades for this guy. So that's the two HQs. Then he's got strike team. Uh, one's got a marker light. Another 10-man strike team with a marker light. Then here we've got a breacher team, 10 of, which probably for far side enclaves it's probably best to have breacher teams, but we'll get around to getting more of them. They've also got a marker light. Then we've got one, two six man drone teams. They're gonna be marker drones today. Then we've got one, two riptides. Both the riptides have um, missile pods and ion accelerators. This one that I've got the camera pointed at has the advanced iron accelerator, I think it is, like the relic one. So he's taken a second relic so far, so that's another command point. Then down here, we've got a five-man unit of uh, crisis suits. Now, he's paid the two command points to make this a veteran cadre, so they'll have a ballistic skill of three up for this battle. 
Now they're armed with, you got three of them in there that have got two um, plasma rifles each. Then this guy at the back's got um, two fusions. Then the commander in the group, or the leader of the group, has got three plasma rifles. And he's also got an iridium armor suit, so that'll give him a two-up save. So it'll be interesting to see how these guys go. There's a few stratagems that uh, buff Crisis suits up to be quite nasty, feel no pains and all sorts of stuff, hitting better. Good to see Crisis suits back on the table. So, that's the tower list. He spent three command points, so he'll be starting with five. Oh, sorry, not five, nine. Just ripping him off. And uh, the Blood Angels will be starting with 11. So what we'll do is, we'll uh, roll up a mission, and we'll get these guys thrown down, and uh, see if the Tau can uh, face off against the Blood Angels. We'll get back to you in a minute. All right, guys, we've rolled up a mission, and the mission is four pillars. So we've got, well, we've got four pillars. So we've got one, two, three, four. Now, these pillars are the same as most objectives in ninth edition. So you get five points for holding one. You get an additional five points for holding more than one, and you get an additional five points if you hold more than your opponent, up to a maximum of 15 points per battle round. For secondaries, both of us have taken Siphon, which Siphon just means that when you've got a unit on an objective, you can say that you're siphoning it at the end of your thing, and then at the next command phase, depending on how many you hold, you get the additional victory points. I think like for one, it's like one or two, Three, if you get all four of them, it's up to a maximum of 10. So you could be getting 25 points around if you're really dominating the battlefield. Um, the other secondaries is I chose Bring It Down because I'm hoping to kill these two big Riptides and that'll get me some points because they're over 10 wounds a pop. And I also got Engage on all fronts just because I've been able to pull that off quite a bit using my attack bikes. Uh, Jake went with Bring It Down also because I've got a lot of Dreadnoughts. And he also went with Attrition. So I think he's planning on just gunning me down and all that jazz. All right, deployment. So on this side, starting from the right, I've got two attack bikes hidden in the cover here. Coming across, we've got an Intercessor Squad. Then up front, we've got the Assault Intercessor Squad. Behind them, we've got the two characters. So Captain, um, Chief Lot, <laughs> Apocathery. <laughs> Whoops. Behind them, Hellblasters. And then coming across here, we've got the other unit of uh, five intercessors. We've sort of got a bubble going on so they can be healed and feel no pain and all that jazz. And also the captain's buffing them. Then over here, we've got Redemptor Dreadnought. And then on the other far left, we have another attack bike. Now, in I've paid a command point to put the two Dreadnoughts in outflank. Or strategic reserves, whatever you want to call it. And then the uh, Death Company will just be coming down via jetpack. All right, if we come around here, we'll see what... Uh, Old Jake Soros is done. Now I should mention too, I, I think I mentioned it in the list that he's given these um, drone control, the two Riptides. So he's got the six here uh, marker drones, then he's got the Riptide. Then in front we've got a strike team. Down under here we've got a breacher team. Over here on the other objective, another strike team, and then another Riptide with his uh, six marker drones. Now He's put into strategic reserve, well it's called Manta Strike, so he doesn't have to pay for it because it comes with it. So he's got Farsight's in Manta Strike, the other commander's in Manta Strike, and the five veteran, um, okay, crisis, crisis suits, I haven't used, we haven't used crisis suits for so long, the, the word is just bizarre, but we'll see how they go this game. So we'll roll to see who's uh, going first and we'll kick it off. Just over there, mate. Four, ah. <sighs> You got a four. So I've rolled one, Jake's rolled a four. <laughs> so Tau will be getting first turn. So lucky I've hunkered down over here in this terrain. And uh, we'll take the take a round of shooting off the Tau and some punches to the face, see what we can do. We'll get back to you at the end of Tau turn one. All right, guys. All right, guys, end of Tau turn one. It's been a little bit of movement, a little bit of shooting, a little bit of shenanigans. So, what did he do? The Riptide that was here sort of jumped from here across to here with his marker drones. Uh, this one sort of just jumped out as well. They both just get line of sight. All the Fire Warrior teams stayed still. They didn't move anywhere. 
And far as shooting went, this uh, squad of marker lights lit this dreadnought up um, with full marker lights. So between this big ion accelerator and these um, five warriors, shot over here and they took seven wounds off the Redemptor Dreadnought. I must say once again, that Duty Eternal makes a massive difference because it would have been more like 10, 11 wounds if it hadn't have been for that. So yeah, that's made Dreadnought super, I love it. But anyway, so he took chunks out of that. And then over here, he only got two marker hits across here on the Intercessor squad, which is now three man, because two guys got blown away and one guy got wounded by this uh, Riptide and all the Fire Warriors. So he's moved more towards the center because obviously at some point outflanking Dreadnoughts will be coming in. Um, but yeah, pretty solid turn. He's on these two objectives and he's got lots of firepower doing some damage, but he didn't remove any units. No points were scored so far. So we'll uh, get on with the Blood Angels first turn and see what they can do in retaliation. All right, guys, end of Blood Angel turn one. There's been a big push forward. So, starting over on the right, two attack bikes, just simply move forward to here. So they're both within range of this objective. Across here, the Assault Intercessors made a run and rolled a six. They got a 13 inch move forward, so they went all the way from here, gallivanting across into here. These guys ran up behind them. Then the Apothecary jumped in. He healed one guy and brought another guy back. So they're back up to four. These guys ran up to here and made it to cover. The Plasma ran up behind them and the Captain ran up as well. The Dreadnought just simply stepped forward and this attack bike moved forward, staying in range of this objective. So that's the movement. Shooting wise over here, um, all the Bolter rounds from here shot into the drones, killing, I think it killed only one of them. And then the multi melter hits were deflected off and killed another two drones here. So nothing much to write home about on that side. These guys shot over into the Fire Warriors but didn't do anything because they're in cover there. Then over here, uh, there's a combination of, I shot with these bolters, then the plasma, then this guy to finish off the drones that were in front here because I needed to get rid of them. And then the big boy here shot over and managed to take four wounds off this guy. So damaged him a little bit. Um, and then this sat over here. So that's it for this round. I killed one unit of drones and halved another unit of drones and injured a riptide a little bit. But uh, that probably wasn't enough killed there. So we're gonna have to see what happens when he retaliates with Manta Strike. I've got a funny feeling that those guys are gonna come down and cause me some carnage. So we'll get back to you at the end of Tau turn two. All right, guys, end of tower turn two. <laughs> so back line here, only a little bit of movement with the riptides just to get into firing positions. Everything else here stayed still. And for the rest of the movement, there's a lot of these guys in the background now. So shooting wise, over this side between this guy and these guys, they cleared out the dreadnought that was here. So that got Jake three points. He also got 10 points for having one, two objectives. Um, so he got 13 points, victory points for his turn two. Um, shooting over here, sort of shot over all of these here, shot over this way and cleared off one of the attack bikes. And then over here, these guys come down and cleared off the other attack bike and butchered a squad of these down to one guy. They couldn't quite kill that last guy. So the rolling wasn't too bad, but yeah. So he's managed to pretty much clear out this side of the board get rid of the Dreadnought and uh, put himself in my deployment zone with a lot of guns. So hopefully we, we're gonna need to remove some of these guys because that's not a good day at the office. Um, so good turn two by Tao, hit hard. He's forced me to now have to do something about my back line, turn around and retaliate. So we'll get back to his in a minute and uh, we'll see what we can do in uh, the next Blood Angel turn. All right guys. All right guys, end of Blood Angels turn two. There's been massacres and the Empress Justice has been delivered to these foul Xeno scum, but it's not over yet. It's not over yet, but we have delivered some blows. So what happened? Movement wise, this stayed here on this objective and just shot from there. These guys moved forward into here with the captain. 
these guys ran, moved up onto this objective to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know what the word I'm looking for. Anyway, contest it. That's the one. Um, then over here, the assault intercessors are all the way over here, and they're close to this objective. So, um, we've got a few things that happened, because on this side where the crisis suits were, so I brought on two dreadnoughts here, I dropped down the death company here, and the jump pack sanguary priest and the small unit that was down to one, he healed one of them, and they come across here as well. Um, there was a bit of shooting into the suits with the flamers over here, but then I stopped because I was like, he's going to remove suits, and then I'm going to not be able to get charges off. Um, we managed to get the charge off with one dreadnought, the death company got in, and these guys got in. Um, we wiped out the five crisis suits. Um, then he interrupted with the fusion blade guy, cut the dreadnought in half, dreadnought exploded, wounded a heap of shit, um, including these two suits. This guy also copped the punch in the head off the dreadnought before attacking it, so he's lost three, four wounds. Farsight's lost two, but they're both still in the combat. This guy's not in combat anymore. Farsight then cut down three of the death, uh, death company, and he's locked in with the death company. These guys are free to roam. So it's this absolute massacre over here. Coming across here, uh, the plasma overcharged. One of them blew themselves up, and then they obliterated the um, riptide that was there. Just absolutely pumped him. These guys ran forward, shot into here, killed a few fire warriors. Nothing to write home about. But as I said, contested. Now, over here, <laughs> these guys ran up, chopped through the fire warriors, consolidated forward in here, and then at the end of the combat, because you can with assault intercessors, thank you for everyone for your feedback as well, I appreciate it. Uh, we paid the two command points and fought again, and the Riptide's now down. He's lost 11 wounds. So he's actually very crippled now, and we're also near over the, here on this objective. So, at the end of Blood Angels turn two, that was a massive retaliation, but the game is not over yet. We'll uh, let Tao have their next turn, see what they can come up with, and uh, we'll get back to you in a minute. Farsight is still here, fighting hard. All right, Tao turn three, coming up. All right, guys. End of Tao turn three. <laughs> Jake has uh, actually hit back really hard this turn, which was surprising. So he scored five points because he actually outnumbers me on this objective, even though they're both troops. So he got five for that, and he killed a Dreadnought, so he got more points for that. At the end of this battle round, he's on 20 points total, and I'm only on 10 so far, so he's doubling me on points. Yeah, all right, let's go through it. It was a good round for him. So over here, these guys stayed here, shot in here, didn't really do much, so just one wound here. Over here, though, the, this guy jumped out of combat. These guys weren't in combat, so they just simply moved across and put some put one mark light on this. So these guys were getting a reroll one to hit and wound because they're really close. Um, and they got the shotguns. So they come marching out of here, and they're like, Oi, boys, you brought chainsaws to a friggin' shotgun fight. Bang! <laughs> just blew half the unit away. They killed three of them and then wounded this guy. So in Farsight Enclaves, these are... Breacher teams are really effective, so moving forward, I think I'll get some more of them to paint up red and, um, yeah, get in close like that and deliver the, I don't know, the great good. Deliver the great good. So this unit got really pumped. Um, as I said, nothing here. But then if we come around here, this was the bit that was, uh, let's let's have a look at this. So, as you can see, there's Farsight and his little off man here. Nothing else is here. So, Farsight was in combat with the... Death Company. This guy was out of combat, so he shot into the Dreadnought and just nuked it. He did 10 wounds, and obviously the Dreadnought ignored two of them due to Judy Eternal, but only has eight wounds. So he, he carked it, and he actually exploded, but there was nothing near him to turn it. So both the Dreadnoughts exploded. Then he charged into the Sanguinary Priest, and the little Primaris Marine was there. This guy cut down the rest of the Death Company easily, and then this guy split his attacks of so one fusion blade for each guy and um, cut down both of them. So one fusion blade cut down the priest and one cut down the prime asset. So they've cleared out this entire area. So that was actually pretty impressive when you think that the majority of that was combat 
bloody handed out by a towel. So shotguns, swords and fusion blades and you can get things done. So uh, we'll be going into Blood Angels turn three, which I've actually lost a massive amount of stuff. So looking at the board now, we've got a tack bike, we've got a bit of stuff in here. And we've got two guys over here. So this is actually coming down to quite the, the grind out. So I'm going to have to get rid of at least one of these guys because that's that's not a good day at the office. If they stick around, so we might have to back to... Anyway, getting out of hand. We'll get back to you at the end of Blood Angels turn three. And hopefully we get rid of these two because these guys are kicking my ass. All right, guys. Stay tuned. All right, guys. End of Blood Angels turn three, and we've retaliated with severe vengeance here, carving up with the Emperor's justice. So, the start of the turn, um, we had a couple of object. No, what do we have? Yeah, two objectives, because we were over here near that one. This one was held, and then also on top of that. We're in all the table quarters. And we also killed another Riptide, giving us more points. So, going over what happened. Um, we've got, these guys came back through here. This guy stayed here. So between the shooting from these, we wiped out the two commanders. Um, this guy killed one of them. And then these guys combined with the Decimator and the Plasma, killed Farsight. Um, they actually made a lot of saves. It was much closer than I anticipated. Over here, um, these guys obviously shot into these guys, charging, just ruined them. And then finally over here, the these guys charged into the drones and the big riptide. They did the overwatch. They didn't do anything. He managed to smash just the thunder hammer alone, finished off the riptide because it's the assault doctrine. So it was like five attacks. Um, and then I paid the two command points to fight again to kill the drones. And then they consolidated into these guys. So effectively, all Jake has left on the battlefield is these guys. So all he can do is retreat out of combat. And that's it for his, his turn. So that's a Blood Angels victory this round because we're over here holding this. Like I said, we've got all these guys over here. You know, we can move these guys onto that objective, move that bike across onto here. We're going to be holding three objectives while he's trying to play cat and mouse with these guys over here. So, we hope you enjoyed that match. That was a real grinder, and the Tau actually put up more, way more of a fight than I was actually anticipating, to be honest. I thought that was going to be a little bit less um, of a grind than it was. But that, that far sight bomb, I think with a few tweaking, coming down and doing all that shooting and causing havoc in the back lines is, is really effective. I've read about it on the internet before. That's the first time we played it since, like, fifth edition or something so there you go uh jake gave man of the match to the fusion commander who killed two dreadnoughts a sanguinary priest some intercessors and other bits and bobs he carved it up with those um fusion blades so that was really good to have him in there and then farsight did a lot of work himself killing all the death company and a few other bits and bobs with his shooting and that i'm giving man of the match today to the Assault Intercessors, because I've really enjoyed using them. I don't like the fact that they can't do anything while moving up the board, so they're kind of wasted for a turn or two, but once they hit the enemy lines, they're, they're fun, they're quite effective. It feels very blood angelly, you know, so it was cool to play, you know. They charged here, first turn, then they threw here, and they've taken out drones, fire warriors, a bloody riptide, so there's something to be said for that. Um, so I don't know, might, might get some more. And also maybe look into making them veteran intercessors just for extra attacks and whatnot. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed this. And uh, we'll get back to the drawing board for the far side enclaves because that's one of the lists we're going to be working on and just trying to get that a bit, bit better. All right, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this. And we'll get back to you with another battle report. See you later.